Okay, welcome to my laboratory. Here we go again. This is the Li Chung solenoid part two. So what I've done is I have taken the apparatus and reconstructed it in the manner that was suggested. So here again we have the solenoid coil, the translucent plastic tube, and on this end I've got a nylon plug with a hard stop surface and there's a axial hole in the plug to let air out so that the magnet doesn't encounter air resistance inside the tube. So this is the hard stop end. Here's the solenoid. Over here you can see the shadow of the cotton fluff that I've loosely placed inside there to provide a cushion. And then there's another identical hard nylon plug with a hole in the end to let air out so that the sliding magnet doesn't encounter air resistance inside the tube. The whole thing is suspended as before from the banana hanger. And it's driven directly by the Interstate F34 function generator, which I have set to provide a triggered pulse, a square wave pulse, 10 volts peak to peak, triggered when I push the button. Now, inside the tube and pre-positioned right in the middle of the solenoid, is a magnet stack and the magnet stack is like this two groups of NDB magnets separated by a brass spacer okay and they're in there now try as I might I have not been able to produce the effect where the magnets are forced apart in opposite directions I've tried all kinds of different polarities and different magnet strengths and different spacer materials, hollow brass, solid ferrite, you name it. I can't get the magnets to separate and fly off in opposite directions like described in experiment 001. However, I can get the magnet to f I can get the single magnet stack to fly off in one direction and strike the solid stop end or the padded stop end <coughs> with uh, suitable force to cause motion if it was going to happen. So now I'm going to go ahead and trigger the pulse generator. Well first I have to turn the voltage up. Now I'll trigger the pulse generator. Boom. So there you saw the magnet move over, strike the hard stop, and but the center of mass of the system didn't move. Boom, there it went again. And there it went over and struck the soft stop on the left side. There was another strike of the hard stop and a strike of the soft stop. Soft stop, soft stop, soft stop, soft stop, soft stop, soft stop, hard stop. I'm going to return the magnet to the center. Soft stop, soft stop, soft stop, soft stop, soft stop, hard stop. The center of mass of the system doesn't move whether the magnet hits the hard stop or the soft stop. The addition of a second magnet in there going in the opposite direction would only decrease any motion, not increase it. Soft stop, soft stop, hard stop. The center of mass of the system doesn't move. It rocks up and down a little bit because of the difference in, in weight, like a teeter-totter, but it does not go like a pendulum. And you can see that the most 
minuscule force on this on the end of the system from my finger causes a great deal of motion, pendulum motion. So this inertial drive thing, like that, doesn't do anything because for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. Momentum is conserved. Thank you for watching.